Hey everybody, it's Buddy from D20 Village. Um, I just have a really quick video for you guys. I'm doing some game prep. Figured I'd uh, record that, throw that on the channel. You know, might help some of you guys out. Maybe you guys are just curious on how I game prep. Well, this is here. This is the video for you guys. Um, really quick, I'm just going to be going over the stuff here in the back and the materials and uh, supplies I use and how I just get my overall story just out of my head and onto paper. So uh, without further ado, let's get to this video, guys. What? All right, so let's just take a quick look on what's going on behind me. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on, but you don't necessarily need all this information. It's like for like just developing your world. So let's get to it and uh, let's let's look at let's look at all this stuff. All right, so here's all this information. Y'all can like freeze frame that or something that save it if you want. But here here's what we got pretty much the four basics to this developing your stories or, or developing your game I kind of look at you have stage yes I'm using a spoon players tools and story what do those mean we're gonna get right into that all right so stage what does that look like what's in this stage category you got music light seating noise level background foreground what is your stage your stage is like pretty much like where you're playing your stage is you know like are you playing at your friend's house or are you playing at your house right because then you have all these things that factor in right like you got like music that doesn't even make any sense it's like all inverted on, on over there so let's go this way all right so you got your music right like what music are you playing your lights like what do the lights look like you know how dim how bright is it your seating that's actually very important after seating, you got noise level, background, and foreground. So seating is important because you want to know where your players are sitting. You know, are you comfortable seats, not so comfortable seats? It might affect the, the overall temperament of the game. Background, like what is in the background? Like what does it look like, right? Like what, like how is the scene being set in foreground? Pretty much like are you guys playing on a table? Is you're doing like theater of the mind style? Are you guys playing on couches? So this is your stage. This is important to set up um, how you want it to get the most effective story that you can. So really quick, let me tell you what my stage looks like. I play at uh, my old work, which is a retirement home. Uh, we play in the library, which is actually the best spot I've ever played in. The reason being is because we can turn all the lights off, um, put one light on the table, so just the table is shining. Everyone kind of looks at each other, and it's kind of like dark. There's books that are behind me, and it just sets this scene for like this old kind of like game, like this old like like people are like looking at it like okay, yeah, like we're, we're like we're ready to get down to business, kind of. For music, I use this uh, Wonder Boom thing I use in my room. It like projects music all over my room. It's awesome. You know, plays really loud if I need it to be. Lights, I told you about the lights seating. Old people seats are awesome because they seat a lot. They, they seat a lot. Um, background, books, foreground, a nice dirty table. All right, you have your next one right here that's your players. You got your character sheets. That's pretty self-explanatory. Know your characters. Um, availability. When are your players able to play? Because this is important. You need to have as many players at your table as possible um, for your game. Sorry, not like as possible. Uh, personality type. You know, like what do your players, you know, do? How do your players think? You know, these are the things that you need to know. You need to develop these relationships with your players, which actually comes down over here. Heated topic. What are topics that are not available at your table um, that you have to avoid? Um, this is a good thing to know. Juicy topics. What are something you guys like? You guys like Skyrim, uh, Game of Thrones, stuff like that. Then add those kind of things in there. And then relationships. How long you guys have known each other? You know, the insiders that you guys have. You know, keeping those to like a minimum if you guys have new players who don't really know who you guys are or haven't really played the game much. So this is pretty important. All right, next one over here, you got your tools and your story. Uh, we'll get to the story in a second, but this right here is pretty much what most people think of when they think of like game prep. Why? Because tools are pretty important. Your dice, laptop books, snacks, minis, props, maps, uh, writing utensils, and schooling. These are important. We'll go over those right now. 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 All right, so tools are very important. Dice, also, like, you know, very important. You need dice to be able to play your game. Um, that's self-explanatory. Laptop, I bring my laptop to the table. I don't necessarily use it all the time, but it's good to have just because I have a bunch of files on there. Uh, books, we'll go over that last, actually. Um, snacks, very important because if you have snacks at the table, you're able to allow your players to concentrate a little bit more. Um, minis, you know, little figurines, those are always cool to have. You don't need like pre-painted minis. You can actually just use like, I use like half marbles for enemies. Um, that works pretty well. Props, 
also a very good idea. We'll also go over that just like with the books really quick. Um, maps, maps are good. Uh, if you can print maps, awesome. Um, I use a grid that I just draw the maps on. Next thing on the list is writing utensils. You wouldn't think, but a pencil at the table is golden. Pens are awesome. I like writing in pens, but pencils on a character sheet, that's like necessity. That's like what you need. Um, reason being is because you can erase and there's a lot of like erasing and writing. Um, schooling. What does that mean? Schooling is more along the lines of like your, like the knowledge you're already bringing to the table. We, for example, we have an art student at our table. Um, have them draw some characters, you know, throw some concepts out for some character art. This is good just because it, it, does the party a lot of good if they can reference the characters, if they can look at a piece of paper and say, oh, this is how you look like, right? Not just like looking at the players and kind of just like everyone having their own view on how the character looks, like that's cool too, but if you have like a visual visual aid, that's awesome. So just use your schooling, just use like the books that you've read, use, use um, all these different things to your advantage and you can easily put them in the gaming table. All right, so let's get back to the topic of books. Um, here's a couple books that you guys can be reading. Um, I highly suggest uh, Tales of Exandria. That's from Critical Role. My girlfriend got that for me for my birthday. Awesome book. It's an art book. Um, that's for just for inspiration. Um, dream interpretations. You know, in a world, in a fantasy world where a lot of people are using magic, you know, they're going to be using stuff like this. Um, and it's just a good thing to kind of throw out there you know get some symbolism into your game um chemistry that's obviously a very good thing to be learning um but as far as your game goes like alchemy is pretty much chemistry uh science and and all these different things that we have in the real world like psychology or physics which i left my physics book up there um but we would they would see that as magic so like this is your magic book uh, yeah, like I said, psychology book, um, Irish fairy and folk tales, mythology, those are going to put in your game. D&D, &D, there's a lot of mythology. Um, the healing herbs, you know, those are also very awesome to put in. Alchemy, stuff like that tells you, like, what plants can do what. Dictionary, you need that. Be literate, says the guy who just used awesome, like, four different times in the same sentence. I need to pick up that dictionary. Anyway, you also have this book, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I think it's an awesome book. You should read it, but it's not uh, a necessity for your game. I just like putting these like characteristics into different characters in the game, and the reason why they're successful is because they live like this. You know, it's just, just stuff like that, real-world stuff. Um, this book right here, Tome of Beasts, awesome book. It's like a second monster manual um, that was created by Cobalt Press, I believe. Um, Pick that one up off Amazon. Poetry, I don't know if I mentioned that already. Um, Sylvia Plath, it's just good to have, good to read. Uh, Anatomy and Physiology, obviously very good to read. You know, you can implement injuries and, and just be more descriptive. Art of War, it's a war game. Pick up the book, read it. Moving on from books over here to props, um, I got this guy. I don't know where the freak I picked this one up at, but it's cool. I bring that to the table sometimes. Deck of cards, good to have. Some little necklaces, you know, as amulets. Um, these dice that have, you know, different pictures and stuff, also good to have. Candles, um, what is this called? Cut Fraser. Yeah, if they're in the forest, you know, bring a candle or something. Good to have. Um, this thing, drinking horn, uh, pretty awesome prop. Lay that on the table. You know, if they're in a tavern, perfect to have a knife for when your players get out of hand. Anyway, so like the books and the props, I mean, these are not books and props that you absolutely need, but, um, and the books you wouldn't even bring to the table, just something that you would kind of like read beforehand, but props you can always bring to the table. It's just good to like incorporate a little bit more into your game. Um, I mean, I'm all for just like trying to get that a little bit more of immersion. So those are really good things you can have. Anyway, let's go over the final little uh, pillar that we have here. That's your story. In your story, you're going to need your time and your place. I recommend uh, making a calendar. That was a suggestion from like Matthew Colville. Um, awesome, awesome advice on YouTube. Um, involved parties, that's NPCs. The economy in your game, what does that look like? Just something really quick. Magic rarity. This is important because magic will break your game. Um, five senses, I added six, I'll go over that just in a second. Um, flexibility, how flexible are you as a DM um, for your story? And then you realize the last thing that we have here is your story because that is actually the least important thing. Um, if you're driving your story so hard for the players, it's not really gonna be fun for them. It's all about them. Um, like I said in the last video, your story is a fluid moving body. Um, so let's get back to this senses thing. Like what, what are these six senses? So you have your five senses, right? Your your taste, your touch, your 
what do you hear, see, smell, but I added a sixth one. Reason being is because as a dungeon master, you're playing, you're, you're telling this story. So your characters, you can tell like your players, like what your characters smell, you know, what your characters hear as they enter the dungeon, what, what you feel when you, when you touch the, the cavern. But the sixth sense is actually directly towards the player because how you're conveying this message is going to make them feel something, not like tangibly feel, but just feel something like, okay, wait, this is, this is not going to be good. Or this is like a happy feeling. So you got to think that your characters kind of have like a sixth sense and that pretty much comes from their controller. It comes from the player themselves. So, and really quick. So... I play my game on the go, so I just have to make sure I pack all these tools, right? Like, obviously not schooling, but like some of the other stuff, right? You just gotta pack these, right? You just gotta make sure you have these. This is where the actual game prep comes in, and it's important to spend some time developing your story, but like, don't like put so much stress and pressure on yourself that it's just like so bearing on you, right? Like, this is all you gotta prep. All this, if you have like all this just before the game, you're good this is all you have to prep so this is pretty much what the video was about was just creating all this and then i just have to do this for today and we might get to that but i mean honestly this video is probably a little bit longer than i was expecting so i mean we might just cut it off pretty soon um let's see what i can let's see what else i can you know, find about this. just the last thing before i wrap everything up how i actually prepare for the game i just open up a word doc um like right back here you know this has the Location, time, enemies, mission, op, all, description of everything just right here. The the title of the uh, of the game for that session. Um, I have another doc behind that, which is just a bunch of freaking names that I downloaded from the DM Guild. Um, once I have all this stuff and I like you know what's pretty much in this uh, Word doc, I transfer a lot of it over to uh, paper, where I kind of call this like my those pages were empty. <laughs> Uh, I kind of call this like my DM tome. It just has like all the stats and things that I really need that I want to reference. Because um, like I said, I don't like referencing my opening my laptop up too much in the game. I want to be able to like look and have it on paper. Um, so that's pretty much like that. That's pretty much it. You know, I, I don't do a whole lot of prep because honestly, your players are going to derail from the story that you have. So just make sure you got all that stuff down. And I mean, you're good from there. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's today's video. Um, like I said, I just really wanted to put a video out there, get some content out to you guys. Didn't really have too much to say today, but, you know, just just wanted to record something, had some free time. Um, hopefully the video is not too choppy. I actually recorded everything on Snapchat, compiled all the video together, and here it is. Reason being is because I'm actually really accustomed to Snapchat's format of how they do videos and all that, just the whole 10 second thing. So we'll see how that works. I don't know. We're still, we're still kind of just testing everything out. Um, but that's pretty much it, like I said. So without further ado, I mean, let's grab some dice, guys, and let's get rolling. Like, comment, subscribe. See you in the next video.